Warning, watching of this video may result in hair loss, rash, loss of vision, upset stomach, diarrhea, numb ass, anal leakage, erectile dysfunction, possession of the dark one, brain damage, or ownership of a kick-ass katana for a low price. What's going on my uh, YouTube friends? I promised to do a uh, update on the Nihanto Katana. Uh, Nihanto meaning generally Japanese uh, uh, in general. Okay. Uh, so Nihanto doesn't mean a specific type of katana. Nihanto means basically, you know, a katana that's genuinely Japanese made. And I'm going to talk to you about the pros and the cons of uh, buying, collecting, selling. Let me get you a view of these beautiful tassels here. Uh, which which does have its upsides and downsides now and i'm speaking from my personal experience and as i do in all my youtube videos i i want you guys to draw your own experience your 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 own take on the video and your belief you know just hear what i have to say and you know Goal is and choose whatever decision you decide. Uh, what I could say in the pros of buying Nahanto katanas versus uh, mass production katanas. Uh, number one, a Japanese Nahanto. You could you could find them on eBay. There's a lot of them. Um, you could find them uh, ratherly inexpensively. Uh, because they're sometimes in, in shape of needing polish and stuff like this. Uh, sometimes you can find a lot of Nihantos uh, ancestral or, you know, there's, there's even uh, smiths that made katanas during the war that were recognized to be uh, awarded for their craftsmanship. So just because it's not, you know, uh, 200 years old doesn't mean it's garbage. Uh, but as I was saying, you could find like these in eBay for generally, you know, bidding prices at 300 depends on what kind of condition. And uh, I'll say if you bought one of the modern makes that's folded steel, uh, it's expensive for folded steel. You're paying a lot of money. So you could pick these up for a lot cheaper than you could for folded steel and everything like that. Now, keep in mind. In the Hanto Katana, they're made almost like a religious ceremony, okay? They take it, I don't know about now, it the, depends on the smith uh, in Japan, you know. Uh, some are more old school and some use more machinery, um, some use a lot of machinery. Uh, some are generational, some are not. Uh, but sticking just with the older Nihanto Katanas. What's the pros on it? Well, you could pick these up cheaper. They're not in great condition. Uh, what you could do is buy one that's, you know, maybe has some rust on it. You know, it's not shiny. Uh, maybe the mount is disintegrated, you know. Uh, you know, you could, uh, some of these swords, you could uh, wipe down the rust depending on, you know, you want to choose wisely what you use. Uh, don't use, like, you know, uh, I would use some kind of powder form, you know, like the, the, the purest form and stuff like that. We'll get into restoration later, but it, it's sometimes cheaper buying them where they need a little work. You know, even if the mount is gone, you could buy one on eBay, Amazon, have it remounted. You could have a Saya. You could either buy a generic, generic Saya and just do some fitting work around the Koiguchi and you're good to go. Or you could have one custom made and go full out because it's in the Hanto and you want it restored or anything. That's generally the best way to go. And the pro is that when you buy a folded steel katana, like if I was to sell one of these, I can't sell it 
because I used it for the price I bought it, okay? But as a Nahanto Katana, they hold their value. So that's pro, okay? Uh, now, buying two is a little tricky as to what purpose, you know, if you're gonna use it for cutting, I would recommend, you know, like some of the Smiths I talked about that made Katanas during the war, not the stainless steel ones. Um, there were stainless steel ones uh, made, uh, but there were some that's mass produced and you could research, you know, what good swordsmiths that made these during that time. And then you could go on eBay and find them, okay? And there's a little bidding war going on, but relatively they sell at low prices. And they all come from Florida because Florida is like, United States, believe it or not, has more Nihanto Japanese katanas than it does in Japan. And Florida has more katanas than it does the rest of the United States. For some, I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. I don't know. So if you want a Japanese-made katana, say if like you're wanting to own a Japanese katana, you could go out and have a modern swordsmith and pay 10000 and up and have a, a very long waiting list. Uh, or you could pick one of these up. Uh, you know... A safe way, I've said, if you're going to remove some rust, if it's not like heavy pitting, is to uh, get some, you know, uh, whetstone slurry and just, you know, wipe it down. Uh, something that's not going to be aggressive enough to change the geometry and something, you got to be at least educated enough to know something that's not going to rub out the hada or the hamon on it, but to bring out. Since generally whetstone slurry is what I use and that'll bring out the hada and the hamon. Okay. You could also bring it to me. I'll, I'll show some pictures at the end of this video of my work. Uh, I don't do, you know, stones. If you just want something restored, I prefer Nahantos, like stainless steel ones, if you want it. I don't charge $1,000 like some of these guys do. Uh, a lot of these guys in polishing, even if it's a light polish, they'll charge you a full price, which is crazy to me. It's like... Uh, it, it's, how could I say, it's like having your spark plugs changed or something like that when, you know, but they charge you, say one plug is bad, but they, the rest are good and they, you know, even though they don't have to use, you know, the beginning stone and they just have whatever, they charge you full out. Uh, for me, the, I, I go on basis of the view of the katana and then we'll talk about price, you know, it's starting from 500 down, okay? And uh, generally, I just work on getting rid of the rust uh, because here's here's a myth. Um, if you have something rusting, you you oil it and it'll be okay. That's false, okay? Um, because you're putting oil on a surface here. Here's the oil. Here's the rust. Here's the metal. Well, the oil's on top of the layer of the rust here, but there's nothing in between the contact of the rust and the metal. So the rust is going to grow. You have to remove the rust if you want the rusting to stop, okay? And to preserve it, say time out, no more, you know, ruining this katana, this hanto, whatever. Uh, and generally that's what I focus on. It's just removing, you know, that, you know, that coating and bringing out some of the inner beauty uh, without affecting the geometry and everything like that and bring out the hada and hamon and uh, have something that's presentable basically and that's preserved is what I basically do. Uh, now you could go that route and that route will give you a Japanese made katana that you're wanting and has also history with it so that's a pro also. You know, when you buy a Nahato, the cool thing about it is the, the sensation you hold in your hand. Uh, you think about all the, the battles, you know, in Japan um, that went on, the, the famous battles and stuff like that. Uh, depending on the age of the katana, that katana could very well been in those battles, has a high probability. Uh, you know, and who willed it, you know? I mean, there's a lot of famous stories of, of samurai and stuff like that. And, you know, they were taught to preserve these katanas in, like, the 47 Ronin and all that. You know, who's to say, you know, you pick one up. Uh, speaking, like, if you buy one without a signature, you could get it for a very low price. 
Um, reason being is because identifying the swordsmith, so they, they sell it off a little bit cheaper. But if you uh, bring out the Hada um, and the, the Hamon and the file markings on Tang um, brought to the right person, you could identify which school it came from and uh, generally that's where it gets tricky okay you could get the age like you know Mary Machi, Koto, whatever you know it it, it varies uh, but then you have to identify you know which smith because each forge has its smith and his style and then he would teach he would have two apprentices he would die and then they would continue and they will hire apprentices, and they would die. So then you would have to find out which generation. And which goes into another subject is like you want the tang to rust. That is completely false. Uh, the reason why I believe how it started is that one, uh, when a sword is made like a Japanese made, he doesn't polish the tang. And that's kind of uh, in a way like a Japanese kind of site is showing you this is what this piece of steel looked like from here, and this is what we were able to make it into in the beauty of it. So it's kind of like when you take the, the uh, suka off, you could see this is what the original piece of metal would be, but the artist saw what's inside that thing and brought it out. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to explain, but... Uh, that's the meaning and you want to preserve it. Uh, some people thought well, you never want to oil it uh, That's completely false because the tang has File marks and each swordsmith their file has different spaces between it and it's like a fingerprint And sometimes they would use it this direction and different swordsmith would use a different direction and then there were direction so You don't want that to rust the thing is that you don't want to do is you don't want to take something abrasive to it. You just want to preserve it. That's all you want to do. But you don't want to rust it. You definitely want to oil it, but you don't want to scratch at it. Okay. Uh, so when you buy, what's the pro of buying something without a me, a nihanto without a me? Well, uh, for one, you generally. A, you're buying something that holds its value. It's not going to depreciate unless you ruin it and do something that you're not supposed to. Uh, it's going to hold its value or go up. Now, if you have it restored to where you get a window into the Hada, into the Homon, where you could have it, you know, some photos sent out and the tang of the filing marks and the measurements and stuff like that in the shape, a professional could say, this looks like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kago uh, or, or um, Amino or something like that. And depending on the smith, it could be like winning a jackpot. You could buy something that was retail value at $500, but now identified that it was from this swordsmith, and now it's worth 20K, okay? Or 15,000, okay? That never happens with one of these that you buy. Though I love my Chinese crafted katanas and they are made, that depending on a company, they are made very good quality, okay? I'm just speaking in the Hanto realm, okay? The pros, okay? So buying one without me, uh, if you buy one with a signature, you're basically buying it for the price value and the price value holds because they already know the sourcement, they know the time period, it holds. But what the cool thing about with something without the me is that you have a probability of having a treasure uh, once you take the time and effort to have it identified if you do not ruin it, okay? So finding a blade on, you know, going on eBay and you have to be careful because there's a lot of Nihanto fakes out there, okay? Uh, Generally, you'll find one people that are rated a lot. There's a lot of pawn shops that spe specifically in Florida focused on that, and they're generally trustworthy. Okay, uh, and you could buy one without a me, uh, you know, in rough shape. Maybe the Tasukas ride it off, and, and you know what? This is what I'm kind of saying. You could buy a Project Katana, and you know what? 
you could either buy a Saya on Amazon that has ray skin on it. You know, like this one I bought. Whoa. Has ray skin on it for like 40 bucks. Okay. And do some fitting over the Koiguchi and find a mount and have it mounted. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to take it to a polisher where they, they, uh, really bring out the geometry and everything like that for a thousand dollars you could do that and then identify the swordsmith and then you know what you could have a katana that's w worth more than what you paid for it and what you spent to have it decked out okay uh, a person like me i don't charge a thousand again i just do enough just to get the the stuff off to where it's not deteriorating and and then you can bring it to a polisher. That's why I don't charge like the ridiculous amount that some other polishers do. And again, I'll show you some of my photos. Uh, you know, speaking of that, you know, like some people are like, oh, if you're not a professional, then you shouldn't be touching it. Well, let me say this much. I, I took, uh, I did a little like test and I took a katana that I, I, I touched up with some uh, whetstone slurry. And uh, you really have to know what you're doing, okay? Uh, and I put it on a form. And I showed the before picture of the katana when I bought it and an after picture when I polished it. And I posted, I said, one of these photos was done by a professional po polisher and one was not. One was done by an amateur. And uh, I put it on two different fo katana forms. And these are where these really snobs, whatever, on there. And it was split right down even. And then I did another thing where I took another Nahanto and I said, I did it. Then they immediately jumped on it and said, oh, I could tell right away. This is, you know, whatever. You're full of shit. Part of my French. But we'll get to this part of the cons of the Nahanto realm. Okay. So speaking of that, basically when you're restoring or what you want to protect on a katana is the geometry. You don't want to touch the tang. You don't want to remove, be careful removing any kind of rust, especially on a blade, uh, or on its fittings, you know, anything like that, really. Uh, the patina, the better, like if it's on a tasuba and everything, you don't want to polish any of that stuff up, okay? It, uh, but like I said, I just focus on saving the katana from further deterioration and put a little shine on it to bring out the hottest so you can see what actually your your katana looks like okay uh with a little shine to it okay and i and as i said you know if you identify if you bring it you could send some photos or you could have it certified and certified is where some of these uh mass-produced companies kind of imitate where they show a picture of the tang uh, Sky Jiro does it where they show a picture of the tang, um, like a, a traced out picture of the tang, and they'll give you the swordsmith, the date, so you have a solid documentation. So if you go to sell this katana saying, this is without a doubt, you know, whatever. And like I said, sometimes 50-50 uh, chance you could get some, buy a katana that's worth more than what you paid for, okay? And again, even if it's not worth, you know, uh, chances are you might have something that's, that's stupid watch. That's maybe a few hundred and up dollars worth more the value. Okay. Um, but the value is not going to appreciate, especially, you know, which is the difference. Like if you were to pay a folded steel one just from China will cost more than you would for a genuine folded steel in a Hanto where they do it like. Shinto, you know, in a holy thing, and they, they take the tahamahogany and they wrap it into a prayer. Uh, they write down a prayer on a piece of paper. They they wet it down. They put the tahamahogany. I mean, the whole thing is a religious ceremony. So you could buy one of these, history and all, for a lot lower price than you could think. You could buy one sometimes, and often, it's sad to say, but there's sometimes a lot of people out there that you know, grandpa passes away and they find some rusted blade out there that sukkah's rotted and they'll sell it for a hundred bucks or two hundred. And average price is about five hundred, seven hundred, and eight hundred. You could buy Nahanto Ancestral Hanto. Now, if it's made during the war, it's even cheaper, but a lot of people don't know that 
if you do your research, uh, there was a few Smiths during the wartime, World War II, that did work that were uh, awarded as a national treasure to Japan for their craftsmanship. Uh, so, you know, uh, and they sometimes did not sing their, their, their me on there, you know. Uh, just because there's two different reasons why sometimes a swordsmith wouldn't put a me on a tank. Uh, either one, he wasn't completely satisfied with the work and doesn't mean that you're getting garbage, okay? Because these swordsmiths had very, very high standards. Like I said, it was considered a holy, like, like a, a religious ceremony, okay? And uh, maybe something that you would look and think that that's not really nothing bad, you know, or anything that the swordsmith wouldn't put as me. He didn't want to, you know, identify to him for some reason, okay? The other reason maybe why he didn't put the me on there is because during periods of wartime, there was, they wanted katanas and they wanted pumped out and productive, okay? So that would be reason number two, okay? So again, that's the Nihanto realm pros. I hope I didn't miss anything in that. If I did, I'll put some writing at the uh, end of this video, okay? Uh, like I said, you know, you're buying something with history. It's something that you could pay even less for one of these. Except for Sino Swords. Sino Swords is way cheap. You can buy folded katana steel. And they think they offer tamahogany folded steel uh, using Japanese whetstones and imported, you know, uh, you know, Edo and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, I like one with history, okay? So let me give you the cons of the uh, Nihonto realm. Okay, and this is my my take on it. This is what happened to me. And uh, if any of you other guys in the, in the snotty realm uh, watch this video, identify yourself. I'm not going to say no names. This is my thing, so kiss my ass. Uh, I have a freedom, a right to uh, say my you know story, and that it's nothing to it. So move on. All right. Uh, I'm just, so. The story is, I'm not going to give any names. I, I, I bought a, a katana, okay? And you could not see no hara, no homon or nothing. It was just black, okay? And I sent it to one of the United States uh, group of collectors and sellers and buyers, okay? And to me, I despise them. And I'll show you why I despise them. And I think they are holier than now. I think they're full of shit. I think they're conceited, they're backstabbers, uh, they say they love katanas, uh, but yet uh, I believe they don't, and I'll explain why. But anyway, so I got a katana, and then I sent it to a guy, and he said it was like, oh, he thinks it was Kaga, Maria Macha period, uh, not very much, okay? The, the, the value wasn't very much, you know? So I said, you know what, I'm going to take some of my, you know, slurry and... Uh, buff it out and then I showed it to another professional and he's like you know what uh, he didn't agree with the other specialist I but they don't want that known they'll say behind their backs and they'll say well I think it came from you know uh, you know Yuda you know school or something like that or style or whatever and you know so I'm being bounced around and uh, <laughs> I don't know so I was offered, I offered to bring it to one sword polisher that's in this buying, selling, collecting thing. Now these people say they respect Katana and they don't want nobody messing it up. They have a holier than now thing, okay? But they refused to polish it because it had some pitting. I myself was able to remove the pitting just with slurry, okay? So they're like, well, if I cannot get a perfect Thing that will tarnish my name I will let that rust and deteriorate but I have complete respect for katanas and even if that's letting your katana rust and pit away in loss of history okay but if you touch that katana they will jump on you like flies on shit okay tell me that is not conceited and double-sided okay um 
when I spoke about an experiment where I put said, you know, lied and said one was done by a polisher and they both couldn't tell. And then one form I put where I did it, okay? And they were like, oh man, you, before they even ask any questions, you know, did you do that? Why did you do that? You know, because uh, I explained to them, you know, look, I, I was told by a very high ranking official within the United States uh, that, uh, you know, this didn't have much value. So it was pitting. And it was rusting. He said, well, you know what? In this case, you just oil it. Okay. Well, here's the thing. And they, these are guys are in collective. You know, they, these guys are in a group where they have like by the ultimate Smith, you know, the most famous sword Smith. And they collect from there. And anything above it is like, you know, nah, nah. you know, it's kind of like that kind of atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, he was saying, you just oil it then, you know, because I explained to him, hey, I tried to have this polish, but I was told no. Uh, I didn't want it rusting, and I didn't want it so, so I just did enough to preserve it to stop the rust, and I'm going to have it polished, okay? And he's like, no, you just oil it, okay? You're stupid, okay? Uh, you you could ask any, you know, uh, smith or metal, metallologist or whatever that you put oil on top of the rust, Okay, but the rust is in contact with the metal beneath it. Okay, especially pitting. Okay, pitting is where it's boring in to the thing. All right, so throwing oil on top of it doesn't mean that you're getting to the mouth of it where it's chewing into the wood. You're basically oiling the, the ass end of the rust where the teeth is digging into the metal. Okay. So this is, you know, they were just jumping on like, I'm stupid, okay? And I, I try to hold my composure. But here's the thing. You know, these guys do know a lot. But to me, virtue is a man that walks with wisdom but is humble, okay? It's a wise man, a wise man will never say that he knows everything, okay? Because obviously you don't. Because if he knew everything, then he would know humbleness. Okay, so if you don't have humbleness, then obviously you don't know everything. So that is perfect example of a jackass, okay? A wise man is humble, wise and humble, okay? And anybody says they know everything, uh, they don't, okay? And then I even had one guy say, uh, look, I'm pretty certain it's Japanese. Like, no, you know, really? You know, so they were jumping on me for touching without asking me the situation. And, you know, they were still mad that I touched it. And I said, listen, this sword was like black as night, okay? I did not want to say it. So, you know, you guys have a polisher say that you have complete respect but deny a you know accepting a katana to be polished okay unless i send it to some other new polishers and possibly have it ruined okay um rather have that done but then get mad that if i would take action to save it do you see the double standard there where they wouldn't take it to polish uh, and let it rust because they don't want their name because they couldn't get a perfect whatever, you know, um, have their name tied to it. But they'd rather have it rusted. Know certainly well what's going to happen to the katana. But if you touch it, you're an SOB and, you know, that's an immortal sin. Do you see the dilemma and the kind of uh, snot ass kind of uh, wrong? That is, is highly competitive. And I noticed these guys... Uh, the beginning of the story is where one guy tagged me and said, yes, I'm going to connect you to a polisher and put it in a Shursaya. And then I had another guy that's really into, you know, the realm of collecting and buying saying, hey, you know, this guy's father has some bad history of falsifying records and stuff like that. He overcharges and he doesn't really know what he's talking about. So they basically talk, you know, like they're in this community and say, yeah, bro, we're, we, you know, high five each other, but they'll talk shit about each other behind each other's back. Okay. That's the con of the uh, Hanto realm. 
And I'm sorry, you know, the, you know, they, I just, oh my gosh, man, I tell you what. And then, well, anyways, when I worked on the slurry, I've seen a hata pattern that I've never seen before on the katana. It was highly unusual in a hormone that, uh, you know, that I, I couldn't identify anywhere. Okay. So I like to do YouTube, uh, you know, researches. I like antiquities. Okay. And there was a gentleman speaking about the, the turn of the century, the dawn of the katana, where the Japanese used, uh, this is true. Look it up. Okay. And that, remember what I'm saying here. They, they would buy steel sometimes from China because China had better iron. Okay. Not steel, but iron. Okay. Uh, and Japanese used sand ore. And the reason why their sand ore was so, how they improved it was folding it and banging out the impurities. And they didn't know that though. That's why it was folded. A katana wasn't just folded to make a strong. It was folded because they knew that they had poor quality iron and they, you know, but anyway, it is a fact, okay? This this guy is a doctor, and he's even saying that they they had a similarity to China made, uh, you know, swords, straight swords, okay? Uh, you know, sharp on both edges. And then sometime around the 11th century, around around that area, was they began to see katanas, and those katanas are very extremely rare, okay? extremely rare so I'm watching this guy and this guy pulls up a picture and it is a picture now it's a picture of a katana that has a wood grain structure and I'm gonna show you some pictures okay he say he's saying basically I'm gonna put the the uh, YouTube address I want you to turn to uh, Point 20 minutes, okay? Give or take, and just let him talk and watch the katana. And then I'm gonna post some pictures after that, and you tell me if that does not look like my katana, okay? So I'm watching it, and sure enough, it has, he's saying what's different about these Dawn katanas, they have a distinct wood grain. It looks like wood, like hardwood floor has, you know, as the grain has this pattern to it. And there was really no hormones in it, okay? That was the dawn, you know, and then after so many years, they began to have their own unique styles, hormones and schools and forges where they had their own little secret and did different styles or whatever. But in the beginning, it was just a small, thin, milky, just, just off color from the rest of the sword. which looked just like the katana I had. And the funny thing is when I posted a picture in that form where they were all jumping on that I, you know, I, I preserved it, stopped the rusting, but uh, didn't use a stone. Uh, you know, they're saying a katana wasn't not supposed to look like that. You used acid or something that does supposed to look wood grainish and stuff like that. Another point, they don't know what they're talking about. Hence this professor's talking about uh, specifically said wood grain and then another one of these high up specialists saying oh not katana's hata doesn't supposed to have this wood grain whatever look you did something to it okay they even said that i used acid and stuff later like, they're accusing me just very hostile hostile environment okay so not only is there double standards they're just Draw your own conclusion. I'm telling you my experience and what, you know, what have you. So then I went to one of these guys and I said, hey, man, you know, uh, look at this picture. And I just watched this uh, this debate by this doctor and he is in charge curating in, you know, um, another country, the United Kingdom's museums, antiquities and stuff like that. I'm not going to say his name. But he did a lecture. As I watched this lecture, because on this form, I, 
uh, they were talking about the hormone too, and nobody could identify what type of hormone this is. And I said, look at that hormone. It's a white, thin line going across it. It has the wood grain, just like he's talking about. He said, and then he just got mad. And that's the first time I've ever seen him offended for some reason. I, I don't know what, I, I didn't say nothing bad to him. I didn't say, you know, whatever. Uh, but see, he seemed irritated. He said, oh, it doesn't look nothing like that. And again, I'm going to show you the pictures of the professor showing a video of this at 0.20 minutes. And I'll show you pictures of my katana with the white little strip at the bottom. And you tell me if it resembles at all. Because according to the specialists here in the United States that, that I talked to that got offended by just me bringing it up, uh, s said it doesn't look like nothing like it. I'm like, okay, uh, I didn't say nothing to offend you. But, um, you know, this is kind of a mis mystery that I'm holding this katana. And I would like... That's part of the intrigue of owning a Nahato Katana. It's like when you can't identify the smith, that's the mystery. And I want to solve it, okay? Shoot me. Um, but he had his his things. He thought it was a, a, uh, a Uda kind of whatever, okay? And uh, and I guess me just saying, hey, watch this. Does this look, this looks just like my Katana, um, you know, he just went off, you know, I'm like, you know, whoa, 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 you know, like, uh, okay, you know, what's the deal? And he's like, well, I don't know who you're talking to, but this guy doesn't know what he's saying, blah, 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 you know, and, and, and I'm like, well, it's, it's a professor, actually, it's a doctor, it's a, and he's in a curator museum, you're not, you know, you may be in the buying, collecting, uh, stuck up snob, you know, where they make a lot of money and they buy very expensive katanas that have me's on it with, they you know, the swordsmith and they, they put them on their walls and look how much money I have, basically. That's the kind of a collector's area. That, that That's what I'm kind of describing and that's what it's like, okay? Um, so he got extremely offended by that and like, I'm like, look, dude, I'm just going by what, you know, I've seen this and I'm just asking him to compare and he was played out tonight. I showed him a side-by-side -side photo. I took a still shot of the uh, video, which I'll do. I'll, st I'll shoot a still shot and I'll show you a video. Uh, now, I'm going to show you a picture of it. my progressing of rubbing the uh, slurry. And basically, where I took dried slurry, whetstone slurry, activated with water with a soft... Uh, uh, terry cloth rag, you know, and uh, just doing like this, okay? And that's the way I try to protect the geometry and that technique, depending if it's the right grit, which is a little home secret in it, and there's a little no other touch that I do, uh, it brings out the hada and the hummel, okay? But uh, he was saying, oh, it doesn't look nothing like, I'm like, what? nothing like it come on, you can't you can't say nothing and i'll let you be the judge because i'm going to show it right now pick up in the photos okay uh i'm gonna let you leave it there my camera's saying a little sh short on, on time space but uh if it cuts out um we'll just do a part two okay but that was my experience so anyways i just recently today emailed them uh, the photos of it uh, to his professor and let him take a look at it, okay? Uh, because it could turn out that I have a katana. If you even tried to Google a 12th century level the katana, good luck finding a picture. They're so rare, okay? But yet, 
you know, these collector, this collector guy is trying to tell me he knows that you're well. And he's saying they're abundant too. He also told me they're abundant. And, you know, I have plenty in my office and there's considered stream works of art, which he was confused, uh, I believe, in which century I was talking about. And he got mad that I, you know, using the lingo, there's a certain lingo they use. They use very, very specific lingo in the katana. And if you don't use it specifically, uh, they kind of get, you know, pissy, you know? Like, okay, here's the thing that bothers me. Did Were they born with that knowledge? No. Somewhere along, someone knew what they didn't know and they learned. But then they give a hard time to another person that doesn't know the proper lingo. So it's not a warm environment. And uh, they basically talk shit about each other. It, it, it's just something that I don't want to be part of. And sadly to say, even modern day collectors and modern mass productions and whatever companies, you got people that, you know, on my channel, I do long videos, okay? And I have people that pick on me for that. You know, some people do YouTube videos because they want prescribers, uh, subscribers, and, and views, okay? I just do my videos to help you guys out, to prevent you guys from making mistakes that I made as I began to collect. I do my videos to help you save money, to say this is a good buyer, this is a good blade for a nice price, save your money, or this is a good product that you might be interested in wanting, um, or this is a do and don't of a katana, like, you know, or, or kind of talking about mists in the tanks and stuff like that. You know, I'm sorry that my videos may be long, but my videos are there just to give you insights so you know, okay? Uh, and hopefully save you money and, you know, just give you some insight that took me years of learning, okay? And I don't know how to do that, you know, in, in a 15-minute video. It can't be done, okay? Uh, but, you know, even in, in modern collecting, this kind of uh, asshole-ish behavior uh, exists, you know? They'll pick on your channel, you know, if you're, you know, a beginner channel, especially if you're a beginner channel and whatever, you know, they'll ride your ass. And blah, you know, you got some people that just are snobs and say whatever, you know, and it's just, you know what? Uh, if we're collectors and community and we really love having compassion about katanas, why can't we just get along with each other, help each other out? If we don't know something, don't put someone down because they don't know it. Okay. Lift them up and, and educate them. And, and you know what I mean? Uh, help us grow and protect the katana realm. Help us, you know, educating people also makes better standards for the company that, that upholds the companies to produce better standards. You know what I mean? Because they're not going to be buying from your company no more because they could buy this for a lower price and it's better made. You know what I mean? So if we pull together as a unity instead of like jumping on each other for no reason, you know, obviously we're going to have different point of views and that's what makes us human. We're not clones, okay? Uh, but this still continues even in the non-Nohanto realm, okay? And it happens on my channel. I get picked out on my time. I'm going on 43 minutes, but it, I'm just explaining pros and cons of Nohanto and my experience and letting you know if you get into that, what to expect. Do you think that if you bought in the hotel that me telling you about the buyers and sellers and how they act that you might want to know that? Okay, but I'm not going to be a selfish prick and cut it short and say, ha ha, that guy's going to learn and, you know, that's going to be funny. Uh, but at least I got some more subscribers because my videos were short. Or I didn't do my editing, whatever, and I don't have this kind of editing, whatever. You know what? It, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. There's a definition for that. Okay. It's called a troll. Okay. Internet troll. Okay. And in the Nihanto realm, it's called uh, a, a snobbish jackass asshole. Okay. Uh, it, it is a realm and that's the con of the Nihanto realm basically in short. Okay. Uh, there is no humbleness in that, that realm. So when you get on there, uh, you know, just if you get on a form or something like that, just prepare to be, expect that kind of behavior.
Um, uh, you know, at time they welcome you to the fold, but they're going to treat you like, uh, you know, Mr. Dumbass number one, because, you know, you don't know the terminology or whatever this, uh, but they do, uh, you know, I, you know, even one guy said, you know, as I did show them photos of, you know, the katana admitted that I bought it. He said, one of them said, you know, this is one of the elite collectors, a katana is not supposed to be shiny. And the photo I showed it was oiled, okay? Yes, uh, what the hell is a mirror polished katana? And if you watch a Japanese professional polisher, after he does the fingerstone process, okay? After he does that, the fingerstone process, he'll take like a resin of deer horn and stuff like that, and he'll work onto the uh, uh, hada enhancing the not the hamon, excuse me. Um, they progress each stone as a higher grit, and what is that? What is that for? That is to improve the shine of the katana. Okay. Uh, yes, there is different, you know, you want to use the right things because I said every steel has its characteristics. Some has a milky blend to it, as you'll see in my photos, and some don't, you know, and whatever. Uh, but, you know, one guy even said that it has to be shiny. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? It wasn't really that shiny. It was oiled. Uh, but I'm thinking, like, what did you think? You know, there is different things like satin polish. Now, professional polisher, as I said, as they use the... I call it the jizz stone, uh, jizz something. It's called jizzu something like that. Skeet, skeet, skeet. Um, that's the only way I remember it. Uh, but they would take another compound. It's kind of like a waxy, high gritty thing, and they they're buffing and polishing. Watch the video. But yet these snotty assholes was trying to tell me that they don't do that. Okay. Uh, which shows, uh, A, they don't know everything. Or B, they, B, or this guy knows and they just want to put you down. Okay? That is my experience. Can I say that will be your experience? No. But I'm just letting you make the conclusion. That's not, that, here is the pros and cons of the Nahato realm. But if you're going to buy a folded steel blade for a ridiculous amount of money, I would start looking for like a Nahato uh uh you know something um a ganto mounted katana like gantos there there's a bunch of those gantos uh some are ancestral some are whatever uh you know you could buy some in poor shape you know send it to me if you wish like i said i don't i don't charge a flat fee it, you know if it takes me just a little work i'm not gonna charge you a lot of money because that's not fair okay and I don't do aggressive whatever I, uh, you know, to, I'm very careful to keep the geometry and just enough to where, you know, maybe you don't have the money for a thousand dollar plus, you know, professional polish, but you're, you're worried about the rust and you would like to see like the pictures I've shown of your katana to look that way and to keep it preserved, to get the rust off of there and then oiled it so that it is preserved. Okay. And basically, that's what I do. And then, uh, you know, I kind of go by pictures. And when someone sends me a picture, then I could say, well, it looks like it'll be maybe 250 you know, somewhere around that long, maybe less, you know. Uh, I don't have a flat fee because, I, again, I don't consider that to be fair. Uh, but as I said, you could buy a Ganto uh, for very low price. You know, this one has a, the Suka is in great shape. It's worth two or three times as much as that I paid for it. And as I said, that could happen to you too. Sometimes people sell things that they don't know what they're really selling. And you could uh, buy stuff like that and get lucky. And then, this doesn't have a me on it. But once I identified the smith, then the value could even jump up even higher. Okay? Uh, you know, especially speaking of the one katana. If it is like the 12th century turn of the katana where they stepped away from kind of imitating Chinese katanas which the expert United States expert said that what are you talking about I never heard of such a thing uh do your history yes Japanese did use uh imitate Chinese kind of swords for a while okay and then they kind of went their own way with it okay uh and this guy was that never happened but 
you call yourself a professional? Like, is he, he said, I do lectures and all that stuff like that. Well, maybe you shouldn't be doing lectures, you know. But that is the the realm. I, I don't know. It just bugs the hell out of me. And I try to be humble. And I'm a person that tries to bite my tongue. I don't like trying to judge other people, you know, because people, every person has their own rhyme or reason. They got their problems in their life and, and whatever. And, you know, I try, you know, I do too. And it bugs me when a person doesn't understand what's going on with me. And I shouldn't do that to someone else, you know what I mean? But uh, just speaking of my experience, I, uh, you know, as soon as I brought a genuine katana out in the form, they came out like with roaches. They were talking about each other, trying to outdo each other. Uh, one will say, yes, he's highly respected and he's above me. And he gave his thought on the katana. And then on a side, he said, but don't say nothing. But I think this is a so-and-so. I think he's wrong. You know, that, that just... It just blows my mind, okay? That is not humble, okay? Um, you know, really, if you want to do a katana, and, and, and especially about the part, letting them katanas rust, okay? And just oil it. That is not true. Um, the, the rust will pro progress, you know, but they say these guys are experts. And then you have your polishers that won't touch it. Uh, you want to take it to the best polisher, but the problem is with the best polishers, they won't touch a katana depending. They'll want to see pictures unless they they get absolutely beauty out of it because it's tied to their name. But if you said that, well, you didn't take my katana to polish it, I want to stop the rust. So I did what like I did, took some slurry just to rub this, get the, and I got the pitting off that you said you couldn't do, FYI, which probably pissed them off uh, even further, uh, you know, offends them but yet they say oh you ruined it but yet you're letting a katana rust away and be ruined you know that is that is completely conceited narcissistic just narcissistic asshole you know whatever to all you know hanto experts out there how you greet people and how you whatever, even if they make mistakes or don't use their correct terminology, this guy right here, you know this book. You know this book. You know the author of this book. He created this realm. He created the realm where, you know, the katanas can be judged. He created the place where there's appreciation of katanas because the people didn't know nothing about them. He was the foundation of what we have today on the Hantos, okay? Uh... Pardon my scrunch, but you are a fucking disgrace to this guy right here. Because it even says in a book, he welcomed people that didn't understand. He didn't put them down. You don't see in a book where he said, oh, you're a fucking dumbass. Bring your, well, look what this, whatever. He introduced him and grown. You know what you know because of this guy. So get off your high horse. Stop acting like an asshole know-it-all. And start acting like a humble human being. Because you do not know everything stop acting like an asshole and just help people out don't point out the flaws just be uh, you know if you say you love katanas then educate people without criticism okay there was one thing i was going to say that i remember too uh but I forget um, that that kind of bugged me on that situation. Hey, I'm going to pause real quick. Okay, I'm back. One other thing too about these collectors, and some of their sites are blocked and they give you tests before you could get into their form, okay? So I was trying to get into one of these forms, all right? So this is where they say, here's the contradictory. Why would you make a form to make it hard for people to learn to get in? Say if they have a katana that needs help or whatever to preserve it. You want to educate them how to preserve the katana, how to protect the mahanto. But yet you make it where it's only the snob asses could get in. Okay. And um, so it's there. That is a pros and cons. But try not to, to steer you off. Uh, if you do need some help, I will try to be assistance. 
like I said, if you're wedding, trying to step out in the waters and buy one, you could pretty much come out even um, and buy something with a historical background that's a pro. The price doesn't depreciate as modern ones do. Uh, you could have a modern Japanese-made katana, but it talking about 10000 up and a long waiting list, but you go on eBay and you can find one that has history and, and, and no telling what battles it's been and you can find one that has nick marks and stuff like some people find the where there's skin uh where the the blade was put up bloody you're not supposed to do that but there is people out there you can watch youtube videos about that see and that um it's just some cool fascinating stuff to me about nahantos and then like i said you got a 50 50 shot when you identify if you're able to bring out the hada and hamon and bring it to someone that you know uh, probably one of the smart asses uh help you identify the smith uh if you get it certified uh there's a price to that uh depending on the smith you if you spent eight hundred dollars you can wind up it could turn to be five thousand dollars worth or or ten thousand dollars worth or whatever uh you can take it to a polisher you don't have to drop ten thousand uh thousand dollars down but you you are able to send it to a polisher uh, you pay for the shipping and a small little charge, I think like $100 or something like that, where they do a little window test to look into the katana to see the hada and hamon um, before they go into everything, which gives them idea of a swordsmith and whatever. And you could do that. But I don't know who wants just to have the, you know, if they say no and then you get your katana back with a little spot like that. It doesn't look the best. But anyway, I just don't like katanas rusting. Uh, so... Don't don't fall into that where you you have a katana and it's rusting and maybe it's a, a pickup from World War II and uh, you were told that you just put oil on it and put sticking up in the cabinet it'd be okay that is completely wrong the rust is eating it still okay the rust has to be removed just the same way as a car okay if you have rust on a car do you put oil on it or does the mechanic say get the fucking rust off your car because it's going to keep growing okay. But there is the realm of the Nihanto collectors, the snobbish assholes. Um, but try not to let this deter you. As I said, you could have something. It is an awesome feeling holding something that's Japanese made the, by a smith that was made almost in a religious ceremony that has history tied to it and has a different feel to it. It is a sensation that cannot be articulated into words. I did a one long hell of a video. I hope that helped. If you got any questions, let me know. If you offended some but people, I'm sorry, but that's my experience. That's what I went through. Um, it may be different for others, but I'm just telling you my story. If you're offended and whatever, don't be calling me a liar or anything about my story or anything like that. But uh, you're welcome to say that it won't be the same experience for everyone because that's true. I, I got no arguments about that. I'm just trying to help people out what to know to expect anyways i got another review upcoming about the yaido katana from uh, sino swords review uh meaning doll katana practice katana for noto and uh you know uh, uh other things uh i forget a name but i'm having a brain fart uh and then I'm going to do a review on that so you guys uh, can get a closer look on that. Uh, but as I said, I would do an intake. If you guys want to see more pictures uh, or, or more detailed uh, videos of this uh, World War II, uh, I actually found out these tassels, the coloring and coding of these tassels uh, indicate what regiment. And uh, this means e either they're a pilot or a tanker. Uh, so... This katana was carried by someone by either in a tank or a plane. Um, and if you read on, uh, depending the wear marks on the Saya scabbard, uh, you could help, it may help you identify because it being in a plane or in a tank um, gets different wear patterns. And that may be on the Saya and could help you identify it. But, uh, that's why these are have so much value if you find an Ahanto uh, Ganto with these because uh, it tells you what regiment. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the vid. You got any questions, go ahead and ask and I will try to uh, help. If you uh not a subscriber, please just hit the subscribe button and the like button as I got much more to come. I always do. 
And I hope this helps someone. I really did. And that's the whole basis of this video is just helping you find things, polish, whatever, you know, just down to, you know, smallest and biggest of things I try to help. And that's the whole reason why I do my channel. So hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll catch you to the next video. Until then, uh, keep them sharp and keep them uh, oiled.